Welcome to Capacity TV. I'm here today with Stuart from Turk Telecom International. Stuart, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. It's been a year since CBW5 went live. Yep. What is the status with that cable? What's the progress? Uh, okay, it's a good question. I think uh, CBW5 for us is really uh, sort of two different uh, types of business. Uh, firstly, it's providing capacity for our parent, TT. Yep. And then obviously we're, we're, we're selling to third parties as well. On the third party front, we've been quite successful. We have a number of customers such as NT&T, which are using our route through Turkey. And on the TT side, we've actually used our entire capacity to Italy and France for TT. Uh, so in that respect, it, it's been very successful for us. So I was just curious to know that in your opinion, kind of wholesale demand has been increasing over the last few years. Yep. So how do you see that evolving? Well, I, I, I see that it's going to continue to evolve uh, very strongly with a continued strong demand. Um, just going back to what we said about CMU 5 we see that we've already utilised all of the capacity for that. Uh, we also know that, for example, some of our partners on that cable, like the Chinese operators, have already used all of their capacity. So we're doing the upgrade on that now. We're, and we're constantly, I guess, uh, fighting a battle to make sure that we have the required amount of capacity available both for third-party customers and for our parent. So we're building new sea cables, uh, we're building new, new routes, we're increasing the capacity on the existing routes that we have because we're, we're, we're seeing, uh, if we just take our parent company, we're seeing demand uh, rising from 8 tera at the moment to something about 24 tera in the next 24 to 36 months. So you can see it's a threefold increase. So we, we really see this demand um, continue to grow right across the board. And I guess the challenge is how do you, uh, how do you, how do you meet that, right? Keeping up with the demand is, is becoming mission critical for us and it puts tremendous strain on the resources of the company, particularly on the CapEx side. So yeah, definitely a challenge and I think it's going to continue that way. So are there any particular regions outside of Turk Telecom's um, footprint where you see any particular areas for, for growth? Yeah, sure. I mean, when I joined Turk Telecom uh, back in 2013, um, we were very much a Euro-centric uh, uh, company. Uh, obviously we had a network going into the Middle East, etc. But since then we've expanded, so now we are doing considerable business in Asia and also in Africa. We have done this sort of on a soft entry basis in that we go into these countries first, usually with voice business, and then we follow up with, uh, with data business and build out our network. So since, th so since that time, if you look at the evolution of our network, it's expanded into Asia, and we now have uh, Pop in Singapore, Pop in Hong Kong. We're looking to expand the network to Hong Kong as well. We have network into South Africa. We have our own Pop now in Johannesburg. So these, and we've also extended our network into the Middle East too. So these things are all areas that, uh, and regions that we've moved into that we previously weren't in heretofore. And we see this expansion continu continuing. So with CMU V5, we have a major player now in, on the Asia route. And we're looking to build additional routes, uh, terrestrial routes, for example, through the CIS countries uh, to Europe. So yeah, these are, these are the areas where we see growth. Um, and it's sort of a natural progression for us. Um, for example, many of the countries in the CIS are Turkic, the people are Turkic mm -hmm. by ethnicity, so therefore it's a sort of natural area for us to expand into. And that of course then takes us right into Asia where we see this huge growth, uh, particularly from China, but also Japan and other countries where um, the demand for capacity is just, is just exponential, growing exponentially as we discussed, as it is with, for Turkey as well. So. We are also seeing um, fast growth that kind of in newer revenue streams, so things like, I don't know, content, managed services, things like that. Um, how is Turk Telecom, if at all, investing kind of in these newer revenue streams? We are expanding our product portfolio, our services portfolio quite aggressively at the moment. So we're doing this uh, DDoS, for example, we're just, we've just launched and we just got our first customer on that in February and we think we launched it in January. Mm -hmm. We also have um, a group of services for uh, content distribution network more focusing on companies that have significant amount of content and need to deliver to their to their customers we launched this portfolio of services I think in December um, and again we already have our first customers on that and we actually have a dedicated um, sales manager Serkan Kayev based from our Istanbul office who is managing this um, so these are these are new revenue streams for us and then we're also looking at some sort of uh, stuff outside the box for example elliptical curve encryption um, we're in talks with some companies to try to partner with them. And that would not just be for us, but also for our parent TT as well. So I believe we're, we're looking at doing some pilots on that too. So Are there any new kind of projects um, in the foreseeable future? Any that you can share with us? We're currently trying to expand our network from Singapore to Hong Kong. Okay. So we'd have our own capacity there. We are currently looking uh, with some partners to build a new cable across the Black Sea, which would go from, um, which would go from Odessa to Turkey. 
um, and maybe drop off into Romania, Bulgaria and into Georgia as well. This would be a very big project for us. We are just looking, we just started the initial assessment of looking at a new Mediterranean cable that maybe uh, along with our partners Paltel that may go across the Mediterranean from, from Palestine and maybe maybe drop into Cyprus and Turkey as well. So we're just bored. This is at a very early phase as yet. I mean, we don't even know the, the direct route yet or anything like that, but these are all things we're working on. But I think going back to your early question around the capacities, we have to continue to look at these projects because otherwise we won't be able to meet the capacity demand in the future. Yeah. As I already said, with TT's exponential capacity demand coming down the road, if we don't do these projects, we simply won't be able to meet the demand. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we, uh, there'll be a denigration in service level um, when in Turkey, which is unacceptable. What is kind of the, the roadmap for the rest of 2018? For the roadmap for, our, for the rest of the year is that we're working on this Black Sea Cable project. We're working on the expansion of the network into Hong Kong. They're the two major things we're working on right now. Um, and then we're going to continue to do the feasibility studies for other projects so that we can hit the ground running in 2019. So thank you so much for joining us today on Capacity TV, Stuart. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.